Welcome to the California Appellate Podcast, a discussion of timely trial tips and the latest cases and news coming from the California Court of Appeal and the California Supreme Court. And now your hosts, Tim Cole and Jeff Lewis. Since you did mention uh, tentative decisions and, and focus letters, uh, most appellate attorneys uh, that Jeff and I talked to would uh, would love it if there were uh, if there were more courts issuing tentative opinions and focus letters. Do you have any insight on on that topic? Uh, of course, the the four three uh, doesn't do those. Um, it, it was, is there a reason for that? Do you you uh, forecast that at any point in the future the four third might start issuing focus opinion uh, focus letters or um, more focus, focus letters or tentative opinions? Well, let me let me start out by saying that I'm a big fan of, uh, if not full um, uh, tentative opinions as some of the other courts uh, experimented with, but at least focus letters. Um, and it, it comes from my experience as a trial judge hearing thousands of law and motion matters. I issued a tentative ruling in every one. And the, the result was that I was having a discussion with the lawyers about the points that I thought were important, regardless of whether they thought they were important. A surprising number of oral arguments, the, the lawyers standing up and arguing issues A, B, and C, when I'm sitting here really being curious about issues D, E, and F, and so there's a complete disconnect. We're like two ships. This, so the quality and the value of oral argument would be enhanced if we use a focus letter or even a tentative opinion. The resistance to it is, I think, largely um, custom and practice and maybe somewhat generational, but there is a valid point of view uh, which says we ought not to uh, even indicate a tentative uh, view of the case prior to oral argument because we want to have a truly open-minded oral argument. But the fact of the matter is most cases are decided on the written briefs. And so it's a reality that oral argument uh, is, is of marginal utility in the average case. That's not to say that it doesn't ever happen, that an outcome changes at oral argument or an issue, the way an issue gets treated uh, changes at oral argument, or we don't get through halfway through oral argument and suddenly the light comes on and we say to ourselves, wow, this is one we really need to go back and take another look at because I completely misapprehended what this case was about. That happens, but it's a small number of cases. And so to the extent that oral argument is beneficial, useful to the court, I think the quality would be improved. But I think there's going to be resistance until you get younger justices that are maybe interested in doing things differently. It would require the court to change the way it does business as well. We would have to have something that looks a lot more like a finished product before oral argument because we wouldn't want to distribute those drafts that we use for summaries prior to oral argument. Hmm. So you would have to accelerate the internal processing of the case and advance the time that you have a more finished product, have that happen before oral argument. You have just listened to the California Appellate Podcast, a discussion of timely trial tips and the latest cases and news coming from the California Court of Appeal and the California Supreme Court. For more information about the cases discussed in today's episode, our hosts, and other episodes, visit the California Appellate Law Podcast website at calpodcast.com. That's calpodcast.com. Thanks to Jonathan Caro for our intro music. Thank you for listening and please join us again.